Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to show you how to attach a ZWO AM5 harmonic mount to a Celestron Advanced VX tripod. Disclaimer. The following content demonstrates mounting the ZWO AM5 harmonic mount to a non-ZWO tripod. If you choose to follow the procedures shown in this video, you do so at your own risk. Now the reason you'd want to mount the AM5 to a heavier duty tripod is so that you don't limit the performance of your mount. Now what I mean by that is the mount currently is sitting on a ZWO TC40 carbon fiber tripod. It's extremely lightweight and durable. It's a very good tripod. And it works excellent with lightweight setups like this William Optics Red Cat 51 or this Explore Scientific David H. Levy Comet Hunter. It has this carbon fiber body here that makes it nice and light. This setup is gonna be a dream, you know, very lightweight and portable. However, if you want to put a heavier telescope on the AM5 or a longer focal length system like a Schmidt Cassegrain or a Ritchie Cretien, what you'll see is with this tripod, because it is so lightweight, it's a little bit flimsy. So your tracking and your guiding is going to start jumping and it's not going to give you the performance that it's capable of. And so you don't really want to short change your mount just because it's on a little bit flimsy of a tripod. Now again, with lightweight setups, this all works great, but with heavier setups, you definitely want to put the AM5 on a more sturdy tripod like the Celestron Advanced VX here. This is a Celestron Advanced VX tripod. It's heavy duty in that it has durable two inch stainless steel legs, and it's just a lot heavier overall than the ZWO TC40 carbon fiber tripod is. So this is gonna give you a lot more stability with longer focal length imaging setups and heavier setups. Now that said, the methods I show you to attach the ZWO AM5 to this tripod might work with other heavy duty tripods. I can't guarantee that, but I will show you how I do it on this one. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the hardware that you'll need to make this uh, AM5 attach properly on an advanced VX tripod. One of the most important pieces of hardware in this whole process is the leg spreader that comes with the Celestron Advanced VX tripod. Now this piece here is going to prevent the AM5 mount from rotating on the top. So if you don't have it, I mean, you could try and use a washer and a nut to secure things, but this is gonna give you a much wider base and a much more secure connection. Now really the only tool you need for this whole process is you might need a wrench to remove the post from your Advanced VX tripod, and that's pretty much it. Uh, besides that, hardware-wise, You'll want to get a 3 8 inch by 16 TPI, so 3 8 by 16, one foot long threaded rod. Now originally I was using a one foot long threaded rod from my local hardware store that was made of zinc. It was like $2, really junky, soft, rusty. Uh, so I have to thank a Cloudy Nights thread and user Bros Keanu because I was just randomly browsing Cloudy Nights one day and I saw on an AM5 tripod question thread, he put a link to a threaded rod from Amazon that's made of stainless steel. So I really didn't realize that Amazon was a good place to go for hardware, but this is exactly what I needed. It's 3 8 by 16, and it is stainless steel, so you'll definitely want one of these. One foot long is the, the best size. Now you have two options for securing the floor plate. Uh, so number one, you'll definitely want a 3 8 washer. Now this is a fender washer, it's a little bit wider which spreads the weight out a little bit more, which I liked. You could also go with a standard one. Uh, either way, I bought a, a couple different you know, sizes and different types of washers just for redundancy's sake, but you really only need one of these. Next, to secure the tripod spreader, you could either use a 3 8 by 16 wing nut, and that would work fine, or you can go with a 3 8 by 16 fluted knob. Now it took me a while to find one of these doing some research on the internet. Uh, I found it from a company called Zorro.com and it's actually a pretty good product. It's uh, 2.75 inches in diameter so it'll give you a lot of torque when you're connecting your tripod spreader but it also has a steel insert in here so it's actually pretty good and it was about three dollars when I bought it. Shipping was like six dollars so total all in total is like nine dollars for me to get this piece but it works a lot better for than a wing nut because i'm able to get a lot more torque turning my tripod uh, spreader so you can go with that i'll post the link in the description for all of this now they do sell two different versions you just want to make sure you buy the one that is tapped all the way through so it will say through tap on it so this is what i'm going to use to uh, attach the tripod spreader 
And then last but not least, you're going to want to use a 3 8 inch E-ring. Now this isn't absolutely necessary, you'll see why in a bit, but I do think it's a nice touch. Okay, so let's get everything going here. First I'm going to remove the AM5 from the carbon fiber tripod, and then we will prep the Advanced VX tripod. Now you can see that the base of the ZWO AM5 is flat. So it's not just gonna sit on the Advanced VX tripod with this post here, so that's what we're gonna remove next. And you'll see just like that, it pops right out, and now we have a nice flat base for the AM5. Next, we need to remove the 10 millimeter threaded rod from the Celestron Advance VX. And that's why we had to buy a 3 8 inch by 16 threaded rod, because if you look at the ZWO AM5 schematic, you'll see that the threads are 3 8 by 16, not 10 millimeters. So this one needs to come out. Now, one quick tip, all of this is 10 millimeter threaded. So make sure when you remove it to keep it away from your 3 8 hardware so you don't mix anything up. All right, there we go. Now if you look closely at the central hole in the Advanced VX tripod, you'll notice that it's tapped for 10 millimeter threads. Now fortunately for us, 3 8 of an inch is slightly smaller than 10 millimeter, so my 3 8 threaded rod was able to thread through that hole without any issues as you'll see. If you're using a tripod that has threads that are smaller than 3 8 you might have to drill out that hole and use an E-clip instead. And I'll demonstrate how to use an E-clip in this video. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my 3 8 by 16 threaded rod and just see how deep into the AM5 it goes. Okay, I'm gonna take some tape and mark that. All right, there we go. So it looks like that is exactly three eighths of an inch. Uh, what is that in metric here? About one centimeter. Okay, now that I have that marked, I'm just gonna remove my tape here and then get this threaded up. And that just glides through those threads because again, this bolt is slightly smaller than 10 millimeter. Now that I've threaded this rod through the central hole, I went ahead and remarked the 3 8 position. And the reason why is pretty simple. If I put an E-clip too high, I'll never be able to thread into the mount. And if I put an E-clip too low, I won't be able to unthread the mount either. So we wanna make sure that the E-clip is below the 3 8 position so right where this tape is, is, is where it needs to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and install that now and give myself some room here. Okay, put this down and take my tape off. So my E-clip needs to go about right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on my pliers, snap that into place. just like that. And now, in the event that these threads wear out, if the bolt tries to fall out, it's gonna catch on that E-clip. So if you're using a tripod that doesn't have any threads down here, you can use an E-clip to make sure that your, your rod stays in place. So that was just a 3 8 E-clip, very cheap. But if I unthread this all the way here, you'll see it does not fall out. Now just to give you a little bit closer look at this, 
you can see there's plenty of room to thread on the mount. There's definitely more than 3 eighths of an inch here, but there's also a lot more than 3 eighths of an inch below it. So I have plenty of room to unthread the mount like that, or plenty of room to thread it in. So you want your E-clip basically to just be below that 3 eighths of an inch mark. Okay, so the next step is to actually mount the AM5 to the tripod. So I'm just gonna place it on here. And you wanna just make sure you have an equal distance all the way around the edge before you start threading. That way you're nice and centered and you don't have to worry about your threads catching. So, all right, let me try and thread that. Oh yeah, that's definitely threading in nicely there. Awesome. And then one thing you can do with the mount is you can actually turn it, and what that's gonna do is tighten it. Now just make sure you don't over torque it. Right when you start to feel resistance, just stop, because the tripod spreader is what's going to secure all this. So I'm gonna turn this till it resists, right there, and I'm just gonna stop. That's nice and tight, and we're ready to put on the tripod spreader and finish this off. So I'm just gonna peek at you through the background here, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish securing the AM5 to the tripod by installing the accessory tray or the leg spreader. So I'm gonna push this all the way up until it's nice and level. Then I'm going to put on my 3 8 fender washer. Now again, I said I bought a fender washer specifically because they're larger than a standard washer, so they'll just help distribute that force a little bit more. So I'm gonna slip that on there. Now again, you can use a 3 8 by 16 wing nut to secure this if you'd like, but I find I get a lot more torque if I use a 3 8 by 16 fluted knob. So again, this is just a plastic knob, but it has a nice steel insert. It's pretty quality made, honestly. So this is what I'm gonna use because this allows me to really tighten down the accessory tray. So I'm just gonna glide it on up there. There we go. And then just get that nice and tight. And that's really gonna secure the AM5 to the tripod. There we go. So essentially this entire process, all I did was convert the advanced VX tripod from using 10 millimeter threads to using 3 8 inch by 16 threads. Now the most important step in this entire thing before you put any equipment on or do anything is to absolutely make sure that your threaded rod is actually threaded into the AM5 mount because if not, all your gear can come crashing down. So to do that, I'm just going to slightly loosen my tripod spreader here and then slightly loosen the central rod. And then I'm gonna pull up on the AM5 and try and remove it. And it's not coming out, so that means I'm threaded in there. So I'm just gonna re-tighten that now, all the way, and then tighten my tripod spreader. Just make sure I'm good. Yep, that's nice and tight. Okay. And if you double and triple check this and make sure it's all threaded, then you should be good to go. A convenient part about this setup is it's also very easy to remove the ZWO AM5 from the tripod. So to remove it, all you do is you just loosen the accessory tray. You don't even have to take it all the way off. Just loosen it a little bit. There we go, nice and loose. And then take the AM5 and give it a turn, just like that. And now the central bolt is loose and I can just unthread it. There we go, and AM5 comes right off, and I'm ready to go put it on a different tripod if I'd like to, you know, and then putting it back on, same process, just, you know, tighten it back up, tighten the accessory tray, and you're good to go. Before each imaging session, just make sure that your tripod spreader is tight. If it's not, you'll quickly see your guiding numbers rise, which we want to avoid. So as long as this is tight, you should be able to use your ZWO AM5 with much heavier payloads on a stable tripod and get excellent results.
All right, everyone. Well, that wraps up this video on how to mount the ZWO AM5 to a Celestron Advanced VX tripod or another heavy duty tripod for only about $20 worth of parts, which is not bad for astronomy. Now I do have a pretty heavy setup here. This is a Celestron nine and a quarter inch Edge HD Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with a focal reducer an off axis guider an electric focuser and a camera. So for me, it was really important to make sure all of this weight was properly mounted to a heavy duty tripod to give me the best results, which it has. So that said, I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you have a comment on the procedure or how you mounted the AM5 to a tripod, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'd be interested to see what you have to say, and I'm sure others would as well. So if you did find this helpful, be sure to check out my other astronomy tutorials and self-help videos if you need them. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.